and chair, uh, CEO of uh, Scaparate.com, Mr. Joey Bermudez. He was also the former president of Management Association of the Philippines, former CEO of China Trust and Philippine Veterans Bank. He's also an educator, social entrepreneur, a book author. Kung kayo po ay may libro niya, maganda po yun. He's also the founder of Maybridge Financial. Pasensya, Joey. Marami salamat, Jo. Uh, <clears throat> I should share my screen. Uh, kasi ho, alam nyo, um, if I do not have any screen guide, I just go on and on and I waste a lot of your time. So I, I hope you can see my screen now. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let me start with a quote from F. Scott Fitzgerald. Something that he told Ernest Hemingway about the very rich. He said, the very rich are different from you and me. I do not think that he said that in derogation. He was simply stating a fact that very often we think we know certain groups of people, certain cultures or certain individuals, but we really don't. So to second, the motion. I in turn say, But the poor are even more different from you and me. All these years, I thought I knew the poor because of many years of having been involved in the social enterprise space. The last 12 months told me I knew very little about them. And at the height of the pandemic, I became convinced that it is not it is never a good place to be poor. Can you imagine when the poor were being harassed at the checkpoints because they were defying quarantine and curfew because they had to scrounge for their next meal? While in many Viber chat groups in many communities, the favorite topic was whether Joe Biden was going to be a better president than Donald Trump. Truly, there is very little we know about what makes the poor behave the way they do. That leads me to the genesis of Scaparate.com. Scaparate.com was meant to be a primarily a response to a temporary problem triggered by a temporary solution. COVID-19 was a temporary problem, supposedly, at least as early as last year. That is what people thought. And something that would blow over in maybe two months, three months. But it triggered eventually in March, a temporary solution, a global economic shutdown. As expected, the micro entrepreneurs by June 2020 were feeling the brunt of the suffering. And to use a medical term, many of them needed financial intubation. And to be honest, a lot of them did not make it. In September 2020, Scaparate was launched. We started with 33 micro entrepreneurs from Casaganaca, a co op that operated in the urban uh, blighted areas in uh, Calabarzon, Metro Manila, and Central Luzon. Iskaparate was meant to be a short-term response. The platform that we created for the online poor was not exactly the best. It was the best we could cobble together under these circumstances because we needed a response that was quick because the problem was right here and now, and therefore we had to respond to it. We realized, though, that it, it would take a lot more for the entrepreneurial poor to perform very well in the online marketplace. First of all, you need to manage the digital transformation because the entrepreneurial poor need to make major adjustments to their business in order to perform well online. When we 
convince the 33 nanays of Kasagana ka to join us. We told them, wala po kaming babaguhin sa inyong negosyo. Ang ginagawa lang po namin, dinadagdagan namin kayo ng isa pang tindahan, kaya lang online. We were honest when we said that because that was what we felt at that time. Today, we realize that certain adjustments need to be made to their businesses for them to perform well online. And therefore, we need to create an entire ecosystem around the online, online marketplace to address capability gaps that prevent the micro entrepreneur from performing well in an online platform, including, for example, store minding or tending the stores. When we launched Scaparate.com, we called, we mystery called, we mystery shop a lot of the nanays who were there and many were not answering their phones. And we asked them, nanay, bakit hindi mo naman sinasagot yung tawag ng mga customer? It is sayang yung mga order. So the answers they gave us were matter-of-fact answers, but they were very revealing to us. In the words of my friend, Mayan Ignacio, yung napakadali sa atin, e gabundok na hirap sa kanila. So the nanay said, sir, paano ko sasagutin yung tawag ng customer? Ginagamit ng anak ko yung aking telepono para sa online DepEd classes. Yung isa, sabi naman, sir, Nung tumatawi yung customer, nagluluto ako ng pansit palabok na i-deliver sa customer. Gusto ba masunog yung produkto? Yung isa naman, sabi niya, sir, yung telepono dala ng husband ko kasi nagde-deliver siya ng aming produkto sa so wala sa akin. And yung isa naman, sabi niya, sir, wala akong smartphone. Okay, so these are realities that we need to deal with when we have micro-entrepreneurs on the platform. So it's it's so easy for us to say, dalin mo na lang sila online. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-create ng escaparate.com. Marami naman existing online marketplaces. The question is, are these online marketplaces friendly to them? Do they even welcome the micro-entrepreneurs or are they by their very nature hostile to the micro-entrepreneurs because of their unique economic circumstances? They need fulfillment support. Obviously, they do not have scale, and therefore they do not have the leverage to bargain for good fulfillment terms from the existing couriers. They need billing and payments. You know, all of them are one woman, one man operation, at most two, assisted by one child or husband and wife team. So how do you expect them to have a good back office? They need training. They're hungry for training. Every time we announce, in our Facebook family group that there's going to be training, almost all the nanas raise their hands and say, I want to be part of it. <clears throat> and fifth, they need digital marketing support. Do we expect the micro entrepreneurs to create social media content, one content every day as prescribed by social media experts? They cannot. So somebody needs to support them with that ecosystem. Now, <clears throat> we went through all that. Did it make sense? Was it even worth it? Nagkaroon ba kami ng epekto sa buhay ng mga tao? So let's look at real stories of real people. Let's look at Nanay Lea Mancera. Nandun siya kanina sa video. Uh, nagbibigay siya ng hanap buhay doon sa mga inmates ng Bilibid Penitentiary. Pero nagkaroon ng pandemic. Yung mga order sa kanya bumagsak na. Noong May, yung Mayani.ph na aming partner, strategic partner in many uh, collaborations <clears throat> ay nakipagtulungan sa amin at gumawa sila ng uh, Mother's Day event to supply, uh, to, to allow people to buy Mother's Day gifts. And this Mother's Day gift consisted of flowers produced by the farmers of Mayani.ph, baskets produced by Nana Lea Mancera, and ube cake produced by Caramilla. Nanay Lea had to scramble to get workers to fulfill the orders that she received because she received a lot of orders. Let's talk about Nanay Ann Ignacio, Martiniana Ignacio. She repairs aircons, installs aircons, uh, she makes shelves. Uh, in February or, or sometime in January this year, she uh, happily informed her colleagues in Casaganaca that she got a very good a very substantial contract with a retail mall chain. And when she asked them, how did you eventually come to decide that I am your proper supplier? She was told, 
we vetted you, of course. We did research. We did our due diligence. And one of the things we found out about you was you are part of scaparate.com. Let's talk about Nanay Emmaline Rubrico. She was in the evolution video. Her plant had closed. She was producing mushrooms and she was processing them into mushroom chicharron. Then we onboarded her into escaparate.com. And all of a sudden, as she was saying in the video, the processing plant started humming with activity again. It came back to life. <clears throat> Nanay Casilda Guevara, she is not exactly poor, but she's a hardworking microentrepreneur. You talk about lockdowns. She has had more than any one of us had. Last year, when the Al volcano erupted, her shop was closed because she was in the affected area in Batangas. And then finally, after six weeks, she reopened. And two weeks later, she had to close again because of the economic lockdown. So none, nonetheless, we onboarded Nanay Casilda into escaparate.com in all of the selling events that we bring the Nanais to. Nanay Casilda is one of her best, one of the best performers, one of the best sellers, and her Spanish bread is so popular. Nanay Susan Noche of Oriental Mindoro. She produces dried fish along with her colleagues in Oriental Mindoro. She is part of the four piece beneficiaries. These are families receiving conditional cash transfers. So you can see that she properly describes herself and characterizes herself as the poorest of the poor. But yet they decided we will, we will try to uh, be on our own, to generate our own income so that we don't become dependent on conditional cash transfers. Again, in the selling events, she is one of the best performers. Talk about impact, talk about efforts making sense. I cannot say more. <clears throat> Let us fast forward everything. At launch time, launch, launch day, we had 33 micro entrepreneurs. Today, as we speak, we have 270. And every day that number changes because we keep onboarding new nanas every day. We had one partner organization when we started, Kasaganaka, that had 43,000 members. Today, we have 15 partner organizations with a collective membership of 300,000. From Metro Manila Plus, which means Metro Manila, Calabarzon, and Central Luzon at launch, it is now escaparate.com is in all regions of the country, including some of the strife tone areas uh, in southern Philippines, precisely in Mindanao. From around 200 products at launch, there are now over 2,000 products being sold on the platform. From being a pure classified at launch, it has now brought select groups of vendors into 12 online selling events so far this year. From just the founding partners, starting with myself and my son sitting on this, precisely this dining table and talking about how a website of uh, like Escaparated could, could uh, come into being. We eventually expanded the group and started talking to people who took us seriously, Nola Vansenia. Ben Abansenia, Ben Ignacio, my colleagues in Maybridge Finance, Chito Sumabat, and John Atividad. And we were able to launch in September. And this year, we have been joined by like-minded souls, Philip Ong, Mark L. Shaw, one of our uh, partners in SME lending from uh, Backbone in Luxembourg, and uh, attorney Reggie Nolido. So this is a growing family of like-minded investors, people who believe in the mission of Escaparate. 93% 93 of our vendors are women, 65% sell food, and 20% of them aim to be green businesses. Somewhere along the way, we found out, or at least COVID-19 made it clear, that it has no intention to leave, at least not yet. So it is no longer a short-term problem. And lockdowns from being a temporary solution has now become almost a stock response, a recurring response with no time limits. Of course, they will say two weeks, but after two weeks, there'll be another queue for another two weeks and another form of queue for another two weeks. The injury to micro enterprises is no longer there for temporary. It's, the wounds are now deep and the devastation is continuing with no end in sight. And therefore, if Escaparate must remain relevant, 
it has to become now a strategic solution, not just a tactical response. As a solution, it has to remain equal in magnitude to the problem. Therefore, as a strategic response, Escaparate will be a sustainable enterprise. It is capitalized for scale today. It is operationally disciplined. It is interesting to the target audience of the vendor population. And we're striving to be positioned for continued growth. We are moving to a new platform soon that will hopefully give the users, the buyers of the Nanais a better experience. And we will create an e-commerce option for selected vendors. We will strengthen our capability to store mine and to support the fulfillment activities of our uh, Nanais and a store that allows individual vendors to aggregate and bundle, something that uh, our a strategic partner, Mayani.ph, has collaborated with us on, starting uh, as late as, as early as late last year, okay, and has come into effect. And therefore, at some point in time, we will be able to bring the best of the nanas into that store. Our five-year target is to have 100,000 vendors in Escaparate selling 1 million products. <clears throat> the last 12 months, I'd be the first to admit, we struggled. We made a lot of mistakes. We learned. But that is what a learning platform ought to be. It continues to morph. And we will morph until we take on that shape and size that fits the micro entrepreneur. And when the shoe begins to fit, maybe, or just maybe, the poor will now begin to look no different from you and me. At that point, I will have no answer for F. Scott Fitzgerald. He can keep talking about the very rich, but I can no longer tell him that the poor look different from you and me. Thank you very much.